Hi everybody, it's me, Vic. I wanted to talk about the new capture cards that just came out from Elgato, which is the 4KX and the 4K Pro. They're both HDMI 2.1, that means that your Xbox Series X and or S and PlayStation 5 will work wonderfully with these cards. Due to their variable refresh rate pass-through, you can now pass through high refresh rates, which I think is amazing. Both of these cards can capture in HDR, which is a high dynamic range. Sadly though, Mac users won't benefit from HDR at this point because there is no tone mapping feature in OBS currently. Now for Mac users, you can use the HDR tone mapping that's automatic with the card, but that's as far as HDR goes with Mac users at this time. And if I'm going to be honest, not everybody has the same monitor and specs for HDR, as there's many different variants of HDR. There is HDR 400, HDR 600, HDR 10, and so people who are viewing HDR content aren't going to have the same experience all across the board. Personally, I record an SDR for this reason alone. Now, if you do have an HDR gaming monitor or TV and you want the experience of gaming in HDR, you can still record an SDR while passing through HDR for your viewing only. Now, I'm really excited because there's quite a few things we're gonna talk about and we're gonna start with the 4KX. So let's get started here. I, I have uh, both capture cards. This card right here, the 4KX, it's an amazing portable capture card. There are some requirements that are going to be needed and it's going to require a USB 3.2 Gen port. Now I don't want you to get USB 3.2 confused with the USB Type-C. Type-C is the type of USB port connector. That does not mean that it's 3.2, 3.1, or 3.0. It's just a type of port versus A or B. The same thing applies with the type of cable that you have. Luckily, Elgato provides the HDMI 2.1 cable and the correct cable for the capture card, which is a USB 3 Type-C high-speed cable capable of 10 gigabits per second. Yes, it's a lot. This card also has an aux port, and uh, that would be right here in the front. For those who game with a party chat console while using a headset, such as uh, your Xbox Series X or your PlayStation 5 with a console, you can use Chatlink or Chatlink Pro. Um, dual PC setups, regardless of what card they use, are not gonna have this issue. This is mainly for console users. I only recommend this cable, Chatlink or Chatlink Pro, for those who do console party chat. Usually in-game chats apply um, to this as well. Otherwise, I'd say use voice chat on Discord and route your Discord audio to your stream. If you have an Elgato Wave mic, Wave XLR, or Stream Deck Plus, you can do this very easily with Wavelink software. Now, the side note that I want to mention is you will need to change your audio to analog in the 4K Capture Utility app for your party chat to be heard using a Chatlink or a Chatlink Pro. I do want to mention that Chatlink and Chatlink Pro do not capture your headset microphone. You will need an external microphone for your recording software, such as OBS. Also, console audio output devices um, need to be on your controller headset. I actually do have some videos demonstrating this that I will actually put into the video. Um, and I'm kind of excited to show you all that. I'll probably run some music too. That way it's not just uh, <laughs> no sound. Anyways, um, I am using my PS5 for demonstration purposes. I do want to mention that your consoles for any capture card, you want to make sure HDCP is turned off. On your Xbox Series X or S, put it in power saving or energy saving mode as this turns off HDCP. Now I do want to mention if you are not using a party chat on your consoles, then you don't need a chat link or a chat link pro and you can run all audio through HDMI. I currently do this as my buddies use Discord. Um, the other thing that I do want to mention is I have a video demonstrating with the headset and controller and without via HDMI audio.
mention another cool thing about the 4KX. You can actually capture content using your Elgato Capture app on your iPad Pro as long as the device meets the specs required and you have storage for the content. Currently, there is no selection to switch from HDMI audio to analog audio for USB devices, such as the iPad Pro, as it requires a custom driver to access the setting on the device. So you'll be capturing HDMI audio, and that means you can't use Chatlink or Chatlink Pro with this setup. Um, I currently don't have an iPad Pro that meets the requirements to demonstrate this, but I will be linking the app in the video uh, description. Now, lastly, for the 4KX, I wanted to talk about pass-through and capture. Um, now, Elgato has generously provided us with the input and capture resolution matrix, which shows the pass-through and the capturing resolutions. I'll be providing the link for the matrix. Max, you can capture pass-through 4K 144, but with that setting, you can only capture an SDR. If you're wanting to record HDR content with this card, you will only be able at max capture and pass through 4K60. Keep in mind this card has some HDR capabilities, but not all resolutions are supported for HDR and will only capture SDR. The matrix shows this in full. And again, I will be providing this in the description below. Now, I was going to do a second video when it came to the 4K Pro, which is the PCIe card. But honestly, I wanted to consolidate this to one video to be helpful for those who are trying to determine which card is ideal for them. And both are great cards, but we're going to actually start talking about the 4K Pro. I use this one more regularly as I'm passing through 4K and only recording content in 2K, which is 1440p versus 4K. My GPU can encode 4K, but it comes at a cost of quality. So that's why I'm downscaling to 2K. Um, I do want to mention I do have a GPU 3080 Ti, so I do have to change quality in order to meet what I want when it comes to 4K recording. Not only that, the files are very massive, so I've decided to bump it down to 2K, which is more than enough. 1440p is, I feel, more than enough on the content. The cool thing about the 4K Pro is you can actually pass through 8K60. You can even pass through 4K 240. Now these high refresh rates, the card seems targeted more so for dual PC setups or the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Um, the consoles can play at 8K 60, but the features I believe are currently locked and perhaps maybe with the system update, we might see more of those capabilities in the future. For now, I think 4K gaming is a sweet spot for most users. Most platforms aren't streaming in 4K and are barely dabbling in 1440p um, with the exception of YouTube. 4K Pro is where the pass through really shines and you can play at a high resolution and downscale it at a lower resolution output with a very clean video. This means your streams and your content are going to look amazing, especially for dual PC setups. Now, 4K Pro is capable of recording 4K 60. Just make sure that your GPU can handle the encoding as I was talking about earlier, and you have enough storage because the video files are very, very massive. If you're wanting to record high refresh rates, the most that it can capture is going to be 1080p 240. And yes, that is an HDR. Now, the beautiful thing about this card, since I am mentioning HDR, is it can pass through and record HDR in many resolutions. Based on the input capture resolution matrix provided by Elgato, this will show you what you can do resolution-wise with this card. And again, I'll be posting the links below with the 4K Pro as well. Now, there is some things I do want to mention when it comes to these newer monitors coming out. Some of them have DSC, which is Display Stream Compression. What Elgato has recommended is to try a lower resolution and or frame rate. I believe this is something noteworthy to look out for when it comes to shopping for any monitors that are 4K with a high refresh rate. This is probably an honorable mention for both of these cards as both of them have the disclaimer on the matrix. Another thing I want to touch up on for both cards is ultra wide resolutions. Currently, Elgato is working on it. That is all Elgato has provided in their matrix as well. These are noted in those matrix, so, you know, please research them. The next thing I want to touch up on for the 4K Pro is party chat. Yes, party chat. <laughs> While using a headset with your console, um, the one thing I do want to mention is dual PC setups, regardless of what card they use, don't have this issue as most do use Discord or in-game chats on PC games. Um, this mention is mainly for console users. There is no aux cable on this capture card. This is a card that goes into a PCIe slot on your PC. 
Party Chat can still be captured utilizing Chatlink or Chatlink Pro. Your console sound settings need to have your audio output device set to the controller headset. And I'm using my PS5 again for demonstration. To set up Party Chat with the 4K Pro using a Chatlink or a Chatlink Pro, you want to make sure you're connecting the long part of the cable to line in on your PC. The Y part to the headset needs to connect to the aux port on your Chatlink, Chatlink Pro. And the smaller part of the Y needs to connect to your game controller. Now in OBS, you're gonna make a source for your capture card. In properties, you wanna select audio output mode, capture audio only, and right underneath it, um, an audio device, choose line in. Now add another source in OBS and you're gonna select audio input as your source and you're gonna select line in. I do wanna mention Chatlink and Chatlink Pro do not capture your headset microphone. You will need an external microphone for your recording software such as OBS. Um, that is extremely important when it comes to anything party chat with Chatlink or Chatlink Pro. Now I do know that this is a lot to take in when it comes to these cards, but honestly, both cards are very amazing cards to use. And it's more so what your budget is and what your needs are when it comes to making content. I just wanted to make a video showing you how both cards are, how to set up, and how to properly use Chatlink and Chatlink Pro with both cards. The reason why I split the audio in OBS is to prevent out of sync issues. I never use Wavelink for these sources. Granted, you can, I find it works very well with my current setup to route the audio this way that I do in the videos. Anyways, it's
Anyways, I hope you enjoy my content and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.